Tesla. I feel bad for him. It's he's getting notoriety he's, now. He's, what good does it do? He's got a car named after him, so. Did they name one of the electrical cars after him? Yeah. There's oh, well, a band called good. Tesla. Yeah, yeah, there is. Band and a car. Shocking. And a car. Well, there you go. Better late than never. He needs a clothing never. line. He does then need a clothing line. Then he'll be a celebrity. Line. Oh, welcome to Progressive School. <laughs> my, my name is David Stevenson. Tonight we have, uh, again, a second show with three very interesting guests. And I'm going to let them give their personal information, websites, anything they want to tell, tell me about themselves that the audience can partake of at their will. Wayne, uh, who are you? I am Wayne Winsley. <laughs> he has a booming voice. Mr. Winsley, uh, you have quite a voice. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, broadcaster, motivational speaker, author, uh, blogger, extraordinaire. Uh, my website, winsley.com, W-I-N-S-L-E-Y.com. It'll tell you all things Wayne Winsley. Keep it simple, right. Nice, winsley.com. It's all about branding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And what a segue. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> what a segue. Wow, how do I follow that? I'm Gwen Camp. I'm a Brookfield resident. I'm a new business owner of a promotional company, branding anything, branding your company, your event, uh, anything that can be branded. I'm the feather in your cap. That's Plume Promotions. You plume Promotions. Oh, that's good. I'm Shh. vegan. There's Shh. no way I would. I will not brand cat. There is don't something look, I won't brand. Don't look to her for any cattle branding. I will not will cattle not brand. Take, no? Somebody. In fact, I highly, I look down on cattle branding. Right. Anything else? PlumePromotions.com. Right. Take Bessie and I'm home. Also, the, <laughs> yes, please. Or my house. I love cows. And I'm also the co-director of the Piecemeal Project with Daniel Lanzalotta. And we'll let Dan explain the piecemeal project. Dan, who is the mindful chef. I am the mindful chef, chef Daniel Lanzalotta, and I'm also the co director of the piecemeal project. And that's piece as in P E A C E P E A C E M E A L. We should start saying piece. Project at gmail.com. Peace. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> that project comes out of an idea that I've had about bringing people together, enemies together through having a meal together, eating together, and sharing. In exchanging uh, cultural differences and understanding who we are instead of trying to figure out how to uh, disavow ourselves and to dehumanize ourselves. And food is a great way of bringing people together. And one day I met Gwen at a party and I started telling her my idea about this idea of using food to bring enemies together. And she said she had a similar idea. And I said, well, let's just go out and do it. And one thing led to another and here we are. And so many things that wouldn't happen if just one person, and, and you probably discussed it over a meal, I would imagine. Lots yeah. of drinks. Lots of food. drinks. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little eating going on, I'm sure. Yes. Right. Okay, good, good, good. That's, that's Don't forget good. that liquids start out as grains. That's right. <laughs> oh, no. Grains and grapes and stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to use that. You know, this is grain. I'm going to use that. Is that what we're that. drinking? Oh, my God. Well, no, not that <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know if there's any fiber left in it at that point. <laughs> yeah. So, so Wayne, you you deliver speeches to people and and assist them in overcoming their fear of failure. Correct. Does this apply? You have a room full of people, mm-hmm. and you're speaking to them about something. Which is it something that they're going to be internalizing? Or is it something that they as a group, as, do you speak mostly to groups or mostly to groups of individuals and work on them individually so they can take what you've given them, internalize it, and go from there to o- overcome that fear of failure? It kind of depends on who I'm speaking to. For instance, uh, the groups that I speak to most are students, either high school or college. Well, that's an individual when, thing, right. for sure. And yeah. that, yes. Then I'm talking to individuals. I'm telling students that regardless of your circumstance, regardless of what you, where you come from, what you look like, every one of you can achieve success. And the main barrier to success is fear of failure. Uh, when uh, I decided that I wanted to be on radio, I, I, was, I was working in a factory at, my job was counting wires. I was counting, counting bundles, wires. bundles of wires. It doesn't oh get any worse than that. Yeah, I mean, 
bundles of wires coming off of a conveyor belt, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't yeah, know. It gives you a lot of time for You can kind of divide yeah. yourself away from your I'm work, like, probably. 36, 37, somebody shoot me now. Just get out, <laughs> come on. And I got the idea that, you know what? I, can, I want to be a radio DJ. I can, I can do that. I believe I can do that. And really, just based on that belief and no other supporting evidence, I went to broadcasting school. But when I told people, the first people I told that I wanted to do that, I was laughed at and told, what? You better go back and cut those wires. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be every... And uh-huh. But anybody that has had a, a, an innovative idea, regardless of what it is, there have been people that have told them, well, you might not want to do that. And, and mainly, or, or I should say most often, it comes from people who actually love you, okay? Because they don't want to see you fail. And that, and doesn't that play into the matter? idea? I would, I would like to address what here's he the just down, said. Here's the downside of, of we've talked about sitting together with your family at the dinner but table. What and he just ideas. said is very key to what's wrong in America and the American economic system. You did not have a menial job because in that repetition, in yoga, in meditation, in martial arts is the repetition of the same thing over and over again. That's where America fails because within the Asian cultures, their method of thinking is about repetition. And in that repetition comes a method of thinking of clarity. And if you sat there with those wires and used it as a meditative state, you would realize that what you're doing is not menial. And we have to take in our own culture the idea of what menial is And to encourage people, no matter what the task may be, that what they're doing is the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And to find within that menial little silly job this most amazing thing to celebrate. And when you do that, you'll find joy and happiness in it. And what you did by counting those wires, you decided at that point in time to go on the other side of those wires. Because without those wires... Your voice could never carry to the public. I understand. I, okay? I get what you're so saying. So what you did, you did a whole circuit. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. Mm-hmm. And that's really a key ingredient to what's wrong in the culture. Because we, we all want to be rock stars. We all want to be celebrities. But we don't want to go through the process. What you did was, to celebrate what you did, was that you did a process. You started here and you went here. That's the best thing to do. And we don't do that anymore in this culture. We want to go here. How do you get there? No, I'm going there. How do you get there? I asked my son one day, what do you want to do with your life? He was about 15. I want to be an actor. Okay, how are you going to do it? No, I'm going to be an actor. Okay, I have a degree in drama from Carnegie Mellon University. I know what the process is. No, you have to go through the process. We don't want to do process in America anymore. We want to go from A to Z success. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's not done that way. You have to, and I don't want to use the word suffer. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to suffer. But when you get up in the morning, if you're counting screws on the assembly line, if you're sweeping a a floor in a shop, you have to go in there and you have to say, I'm the best at it. And you have to celebrate yourself because no one else is going to do it. But can't... I agree... Go ahead. Okay. I agree with you, kind of. Uh, I agree that, first of all, all work, all honest work is honorable. Exactly. Absolutely. And, but for the person that is, okay, for the person who's a mechanic, who is, who can look at an engine and, and make it talk, okay, who is naturally gifted to be a mechanic, okay, if you give that person a job, digging ditches while they can do it they'll be miserable because it's not their gift it's not where they're supposed to be that's what I'm saying and I, what I'm saying is okay look yes I was counting wires but you know what I was miserable you know why that's not what I was supposed to be doing yes it was no, it wasn't. <laughs> because you ha- when you do something the most simplistic thing mm-hmm. if you're turning a pot clay on a wheel it's the most simplistic but you can either not be scented with that pot mm-hmm. It's going to be off. It's going to throw off. But if you take that clay, the most basic thing, wet mud, Mm -hmm. and you turn it, and you feel it, and you put your energy into that pot, you'll have a beautiful pot. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yes. That's the beauty. As far as as doing... But I I also understand what you're saying, of course. Yeah, but I mean, okay. The Mindful Chef, okay? Yes. You 
had a vision and a dream and an idea to do what you did. And you took the risk involved Huge. to get that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because you weren't happy wherever it, wherever it is that you were before you took that risk. You weren't happy, or if you were happy, you felt that you could do more, and well, you wanted, yeah, and you of wanted course, to do of course. more. Okay, and that's that's what I'm saying. I had this I was ex- miserable because I was not doing what I loved. Come on, come on! I saw a glimmer in Gwen's eye. Okay, Gwen. go ahead, Gwen. Wait, I forgot what I put the glimmer back in your eye. In okay, there. no, I have a glimmer. <laughs> Let's get a woman's point of view. Yeah, <laughs> I have a question. It's going to be completely going in a different direction Good. than I was sure. talking Let's about go. what you were talking about. Let's okay, go. so you do your motivational speaking about positive. Are you ever um, uh, hired by all women's colleges or high schools? And if you are, is your, um, is your talk a little bit different? Because as we know, women, girls from a young age are in subtle ways by our society, mm-hmm. et cetera, to not succeed anymore at, in certain fields. And our self-esteem starts getting eroded, mm-hmm. I think they say, say starting at 10 years old or 12, where we have a lot of self-esteem, and then at some point, it seems to be pretty common in our culture that women's girls' self-esteem drops. So, has this ever um, happened? Have you spoken for a girls' institution? Yes, I've is, had uh, is your talk one different? It is. It is. Um, in essence, it is, it is the same kind of uh, presentation, but yes, it was absolutely. It was geared in a different way. Yes, I've had uh, one opportunity to speak to uh, a class. It was an all-girls school, but it was a class. Of uh, of all of all uh, female students, and what I said was yes. In, in in many cases, it takes more courage because there are so many avenues that are s- supposed to be, you know, closed off to women, or 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 uh, you know, the, the, so much of society is geared towards how you look or what what is right. beautiful. Society has a standard of what's beautiful, what's to be worn, and things like that. There's a lot of pressure. On, on women, much more so and in different ways than for men. So, so yes, you know, you, you, your motivation is geared in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the goal is the same. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is that every person should not be afraid. No one should be afraid of reaching for where, whatever it is that they want to achieve. That's all. That each of us has the tools and the gifts to do something. You know, not everybody can. Okay, my gift, I can write well and speak well. When I was in the Navy, I served uh, four years in the U.S. Navy as a jet engine mechanic. Guess what? I'm an awful mechanic. Uh, you know, we all have that's our not good to hear about no, jets. I was, <laughs> I was a jet Uh-oh. engine mechanic. Worked. Did two. Tours did you ever have extra US parts on the floor? <laughs> no. Thankfully, thankfully, okay. none of my planes crashed. I have a, crashed, I have a question for saying, you. That wasn't my gift. I, I, okay, where does the germ of fear come from? If if we're in a country that's mm-hmm. always promoting itself as a beacon and and we're forward thinkers and we're progressive and the and the pioneer concept, you know, trailblazers. That's the nature, you know. John Wayne. We've got, we're going to go sure. tra- trail, the, you know, set the trail and go out into the woods and and we're going to conquer this. This, this nature. Mm-hmm. Where does it come from? Where did America make the wrong turn? Because it seems like everybody else in the world is going for it, and we've become complacent, and we see it. We see it in our infrastructure. We see it in, in job loss. We see it in manufacturing loss. Uh, so something has gone awry. Where is that fear, the seeds of fear? Where are they coming from? What has happened is right now in, in America... Americans, we are the most self-entitled people on the planet, and in many cases, the least motivated to actually work for it. That's the problem. Uh, well, that I, wasn't always the case. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. But because of my experience in the military, I got to see a lot of the world. And there is a reason that people will even to this day get into leaky boats and cross shark-infested waters to get here because of the opportunity. Unfortunately, and, and I see this in, in schools and in businesses that I speak uh, to, uh, there is a lack of desire to put the work in. There is, unfortunately, a, a, a lack of importance being placed on 
responsibility and in what it takes. You know, being brave enough to fail is hard. That's why most people don't do it. I, I have to weigh in here now because 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 I want to segue in with the with thought about immigration, and I'm a big immigrant pro- proponent, as the audience well knows. But um, this is what's so great about immigration, what's made America such a great country by having this constant influx of immigrants who work hard, mm-hmm. who will take that chance, who teach us all a lesson in retrospect of what we used to be and kind of give us a little kick in the, kick in the fanny to, mm-hmm. to step it up a notch again. But I also wanted to mention, we talked about um, women and how women are, I'll put on my educator hat now, because I saw it firsthand in not only my kids growing up and going to school, but also when I was teaching, women are taught differently than men. Boys and girls are taught differently. Mm -hmm. Mathematics is a perfect example Mm -hmm. where girls are taught to get the answer exactly right, to be very specific. Don't, there's no, there's no gimme for girls in math. There's no, there's no leeway. But for boys, boys are taught to estimate. And that's the best way to learn math is to, is to, you throw the dart at the board, you, you, you take a shot at an answer, and then if the, if the answer kind of makes sense, it seems like it might be a, a correct answer, you're on the right track. Then you go back and you, do the, and you learn that way. And girls are taught to not estimate. Boys are taught to estimate. And that's why boys are better at math historically, because they're taught entirely differently. I, I hadn't thought about that. Oh, I'll put but unfortunately, the, 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 the latest st- statistics that just came out like this week shows that women are getting more college degrees. Mm-hmm. That's just out this week. And it's in engineering and mathematics sciences. Well, there's a good trend there. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a mm-hmm. very good so trend. So I think that's changed. So, that, so maybe we've broken out of that pattern, and that's, that's fantastic. Well, there's some good news. I'd like to say something about um, the feeling of entitlement that you're talking about and without the work. I think that one of the things that's happened is the celebrity praise, the the celebrity worship that we have in our culture mm-hmm. where, um, uh, you know, big superstars or child stars that hit it big or... Uh, I, I have teenage sons myself and they say, you know, oh, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be this and that. They put these celebrities up on a thing. But then when you talk about the what it took to get there, if it did. I mean, some of these kids that become big stars, it happened overnight, literally. Uh, and it then, went on just as fast. Right, right. And so there's that thing of just wanting to instantly be famous. Instantly, well, that, the you know, internet has really fueled right, that. Right, the internet and also te- television and yeah. just uh, the whole uh, celebrity thing. And then, um, uh, yeah, I had another point, but I forgot. Yes, that's it. But I, no, I, but, I really, you're, but really you're definitely no. You 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 nailed it. Uh, we've we've reached a point in society where everything is fast. Every, everybody wants it and they want it now. Uh, think about it. You can put something in the microwave for a minute, and now even though you're like, you're like come, come on, on, come on, come yeah. on, come on. You know, sometimes you don't even let it count down. Do you? Right. And like five seconds. Like, That's good. Okay. Well, our children are just like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I. I watch my kids watching television, the two older ones. You get whiplash with your eyes when watching because they're commercial, they're out. Bam, bam, bam. I mean, you're Same like, with the radio. With the yeah. Remote. Yeah. Yeah. And it's natural but, for children to be impulsive because yeah. that's the nature of being yeah. a child. Right. But when but it comes to, right, but when it comes to actually becoming successful, there are no, actual, there are no shortcuts. There really aren't. Uh, I tell students, okay, I have written three novels. Never taken a single creative writing class. I don't. I don't have an English degree. Nothing. Nothing at all. And they're like, "Well, see, you don't need." It. No. You know why I was able to do that? That's over thirty years of voracious reading that enabled me to to learn how to do that. You can learn what took me thirty years. You can learn in four years in college. And I bet you were learning, not even knowing it. You probably were Absolutely. doing part of that educational process. Yeah, it was just. It, it was just while you were counting those wires. It could be. It all, it all comes it's back all to the counting wires, man. That's it's what all it is. for a purpose. It's well, all, yeah, we, exactly. we live in a plug in, mm-hmm. plug and play society where everything, everyone can be replaced. And I find that kind of sad. It's it's the same with dating. You go online now. Mm-hmm. 
You it's don't like right. that, but replace it. It doesn't work. The, I'm not there. satisfied. Replace it. The car broke down. Replace it. Mm-hmm. The dish broke. Replace it. Yeah. So marriage you know, doesn't work. Yeah, you're out of there. You're, you're out of there. One. And yeah. there's there's no there's no accountability and there's no responsibility. Uh, people act out and they don't realize there's a consequence to their experience. I told my son Careful, recently. You're gonna start sounding like a Republican. I, I, accountability I, 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 and responsibility. I, 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 I may be. I may be. I, how surprising it is, Wayne. I have to. I, 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 have to right. I have to fess up. I might be a closet Republican. Republican. <laughs> yeah. Come on home. Come, it, come on home. No. Come on. Uh, home. <laughs> take me home. Take me home. So I. 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 I well, well, there, lots of <laughs> we have. You know. It, well, that becomes a label thing, and we have to get rid right. of the labels. The labels don't make sense anymore. The, it, the world has changed drastically. And it, ch- it changes so fast, like you said. We have to become more sensible, and we have to become more intelligent on in how we do things. And we're not doing that. We're not instilling that in people. You make a decision in your life. You do something. You better be prepared for the consequences. If you're not willing to deal with the consequences, don't do it. We see that with political figures. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I went to South America with this woman on a plane. How did that happen? I got caught in a, I got mm-hmm. caught in a stall with this guy. How did that happen? In a wide stance. If you, you, right. So but as human <laughs> beings, right. we like the we like the risky business. Mm-hmm. But there's also a consequence. And we are we are a legalized country of lawsuits and li- litigation because we don't Think it through. We don't think of the consequence, and we have to come back to that sensibility. It, it goes, you know, and it all fits together with family values and food and women's rights and African American rights in this country. Of everybody's rights, we have to become more us sensible. <laughs> well, you guys started all this, these issues. Here. <laughs> I have a, another question. Yeah. Go right ahead. So I have one of a uh, little pet peeve that I have about uh, as far as in, instilling a, a fearless uh, attitude in kids or whatever is when it gets when it's overboard, and I call it the the everyone gets a trophy uh, problem, <laughs> where oh, you know yeah. you get a trophy or an award no matter what nobody like, loses in America. Nobody mm-hmm. loses. You go you you start. I saw it as with my kids to play baseball. You start with t ball. Everybody gets a trophy for the game. Nobody gets struck. There's no strikeout. You just keep hitting until you hit it. Nobody gets struck out. And everybody gets a trophy. Everybody gets a trophy until you finally get to this one thing and nobody <laughs> explains to the kids. They show up to play ball and suddenly there's strikeouts. There's no trophy. I mean, that whole mm-hmm. thing of everybody is the best. Everybody's a winner because nobody wants to say, no, you lost. Mm-hmm. Your team lost. I don't think You're, you can fool kids with that. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. So fool. what they is know. that? Why? It's It's... Somebody somewhere along the line got the bright idea. We want to make everybody feel good, and you know, we don't want anybody to like feel bad and to lose. Well, guess what? It's good for therapists. Real life isn't like that. It's easier to do yeah. that than to teach them a lesson. Yeah. In it, I guess. I guess. Right? I mean, there's yeah. a lesson to be learned in yeah. losing. There I, is. You know, there is. There is nothing wrong with failing at something, which is why I tell people to be brave enough to fail. Right. Fail just means first attempts inspire learning. That's all it is. Wow. But that's, okay. you know? that's why cooking is so great. Yeah. I tell, when I give a cooking class, you know, either you're going to eat your mistake or you're going to throw it out and you can do it again. There's a mm-hmm. process to it. And I, I've used this process in cooking classes with kids 11 and 12 years old. And it's, it's pretty phenomenal what you see, the mm-hmm. results of kids trying to cook something for the first time, and they, they burnt it. It's like, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. Just try it again. We, have, we, have, we live in a culture where we, can, we have that ability to do it again. Some people don't. Right. When, when you have a culture that's so obsessed with their body weight and what they're eating, and that's pretty powerful stuff th- when you start thinking about it, that people can walk around and worry about their body weight how amazing is that? I mean, I totally when, when, when yeah. you look at the rest of the world, there are lots of places mm-hmm. on the planet where people are, are literally f- their skin on bones. Mm-hmm. And here we have a culture where... America is the only place where the poor people are fat. It's pretty amazing. Quality oh, of food that they eat. Other, that's, that's another, another show. That's, that's another a completely show. We could other. talk about that for a while. <laughs> sure. but, uh, but, uh, but, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone in a conversation... Uh, 
uh, I think it was a couple days ago, actually, uh, made the remark, you know, I said, well, yeah, if something, whatever happened, we'd have people starving in the streets. And the person said, well, we have people starving in the streets now. And I said, no, we don't. No, we have homeless people. We, we have people who, through whatever choices or whatever, don't eat. But everybody in America can get some food. We don't have, I've seen places where people are starving in the streets. It's not America. Not a pretty picture. No, it's not. No. Yeah, it's not. But I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you talk about some of the other places. I mean, I've, you know, well, I've been to every continent except South America. So, yes, I've seen some pretty wonderful things, but I've seen some pretty awful things. And people starving in the streets actually doesn't happen in America. Yeah, you know, think about it. People they're losing weight food. in the streets. Yeah, they're, they're losing weight. Yeah, they're they're on whatever <laughs> diet plan you want to call that, but but no. And like you say, you have a lot of that's it's an incredible cross can, section of, 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 of people who are living mm. in poverty, and mm. and yet they have they have pretty sizable bodies, and I think that's that's okay. Principally due to let's, okay, that's let's, another let's issue. Be, let's let's, let's be honest. Zero. We have we have okay. We have people who are. Unemployed, get food stamps, been on food stamps for forever, mm -hmm. but they have PlayStations and cable and cigarettes. <laughs> okay, no, we don't have people starving in the streets. Okay, now poor we have food young actri choices. actresses that are starving in Bel Air and by Hollywood. choice. Yeah, okay, <laughs> by choice. You know, but but yeah, uh, gotta, no, gotta, that's gotta, another gotta, topic too. That's gotta, not necessarily the black choice. Swan mm. Saw it the other night with Kristen, and <laughs> yeah. let me tell you something. It just reinforced for me why I don't like ballet. Mm. Because of what it does, not just to women, but to men, too. And gymnastics, too. Mm -hmm. Gymnastics yeah, also, yeah. especially with young kids mm -hmm. that are yeah. just, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're hypercritical of, of how they look. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they fall, it's just as bad to fall out of the bottom end of the, uh, of the, of the bell-shaped curve as far as mm -hmm. what's reasonable as far as right. weight goes. It's just as bad to fall out the bottom end as to, as to explode out mm -hmm. the top end. It's just mm -hmm. as bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, yeah, it's just... Funny, the whole thing like you said, you know, we, we tell our kids, you know, when they're small, oh, nobody's a loser, everybody's a winner. You're the best. But as soon, but as, soon as we kick them out to the real world, guess what? Uh, everybody wants to be the top salesman, best chef, uh, best speaker, but whatever, okay? Right. All, because real, guess what? The real world, there are winners and losers. Mm -hmm. Or as you say, find, find your process of mm -hmm. doing things. Find, do things you don't like to do in order to help you find out what you want to do. Sure. There's nothing wrong with that. Great you know? process. And, I mean, and, look, mm -hmm. I, am, I am thankful for the gentleman who is gifted at fixing cars. Because guess what? I don't care how my car works. I really don't. Until you get the bill. I will gladly. Uh, <laughs> look, that's why I work. Because I will gladly. If you're the no, mechanic, I will gladly they're pay they're you. They're surgeons. They yes. Great you stuff. Know? And you know what? And I'm, I'm thankful that there are people who are gifted as chefs because I get to enjoy their fine products. Yeah? I'm glad that there are people that can do it. We all have different gifts and abilities. Okay, we're wrapping that's it up. All. This is Progressive Soup. we we'll continue the conversation as we wrap it up. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's all I'm saying. And, and my whole thing is just telling people to be brave enough to follow whatever that thing is. Harness your dreams. Yeah, that's all. That's a good message. And Excellent. for the aspiring actors, look at aspiring actors.